house boy. Then you must have made it, yes? Yes? Somebody's lying around here. Somebody's not playing the game straight. Come on, come on, who's lying? My the casting process for the 1966 movie, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, was a meticulous process, carefully handled by the film's director, Mike Nichols. The film, an adaptation of Edward Albee's play, required a cast that could handle the complex relationships and intense dialogue. The first key role, Martha, was given to Elizabeth Taylor. Taylor was a natural choice due to her reputation as a powerful dramatic actress. Her real-life turbulent personal life also added depth to her portrayal of the troubled Martha. Richard Burton, Taylor's real-life husband, was cast as George. Burton was known for his Shakespearean roles, but Nichols saw his potential for the complex and demanding role of George. Burton's chemistry with Taylor was undeniable, having worked together in several films before. The roles of Nick and Honey, the younger couple drawn into Martha, and George's tumultuous game of marriage were more challenging to cast. George Siegel, a relatively unknown actor at the time, was chosen for Nick after several auditions. His freshness and vulnerability were seen as a good contrast to Burton's season intensity. For the role of Honey, Sandy Dennis was chosen Ader Dennis had previously worked with Nichols on Broadway, and he believed she could bring the right blend of innocence and resilience to the role. The casting process also involved chemistry tests, where the actors were given scenes to rehearse together. These tests helped Nichols gauge the dynamics between the actors and how they would interact on screen. The cast chemistry was palpable, leading to one of the most memorable and intense on-screen partnerships in film history. Granny doesn't give you a hangover? No, I never mix, and then I don't drink very much either. No, oh, good, good. <laughs> the 1966 movie, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? was directed by Mike Nichols, who brought a unique vision to the project. Known for his innovative and unconventional approach, Nichols drew inspiration from various creative influences. He was particularly drawn to the work of playwright Edward Albee, who wrote the play on which the movie is based. Nichols' style is characterized by his ability to delve into the complexities of human relationships, and this film is no exception. He used long takes, in close-ups to create a sense of intimacy and claustrophobia, reflecting the turbulent emotions of the characters. The use of black and white cinematography added to the film's stark and raw atmosphere. To bring the story to life, Nichols worked closely with the cast and crew. He encouraged the actors to explore their characters' emotions and motivations, resulting in powerful and intense performances. Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, who played the lead roles, were known for their tumultuous real-life relationship, which Nichols drew upon to add depth to their on-screen chemistry. Nichols also collaborated with production designer Richard Silbert to create the film's iconic sets. The movie takes place almost entirely within the confines of a single house, and Silbert's intricate set design helped to convey the characters' emotional states. Overall, Nichols' directorial vision for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? was one of raw emotion, intense performances, and a focus on the complexities of human relationships. His unconventional style and close collaboration with the cast and crew helped to create a film that continues to resonate with audiences today. Oh, no. And that's how you play Get the Guests. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? It is a classic 1966 movie directed by Mike Nichols based on Edward Albee's play. This film offers a mix of humor, shock, and sadness, making it a must-watch. Firstly, did you know that the movie's title comes from a humorous classroom ditty that changes the lyrics of the song Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf? This connection highlights the movie's themes of deception, fear, and the masks we wear in relationships. There are many intriguing facts about this movie. For instance, the film was shot in black and white due to the production code at the time which frowned upon mature content in color films. This artistic choice added to the movie's intense atmosphere. Moreover, the cast, including Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, George Segal, and Sandy Dennis, delivered powerful performances that earned them Oscar nominations. Dennis even won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Now, do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to this movie? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As for me, I cherished the first time I watched this movie and was captivated by the raw emotion, witty dialogue, and the complex relationships between the characters. 
It was a fascinating exploration of the human condition that left a lasting impression on me. Remember, this movie is more than just a story of a dysfunctional couple. It's a testament to the power of honesty, forgiveness, and the importance of facing our fears. So, keep watching and discover the many layers of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf for yourself. His first attempt and also his last! Hey! <laughs> I ride! The 1966 movie Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was filmed using innovative techniques that added depth to its storytelling. The set design was a significant aspect of the production. The entire movie was shot on sound stages in Hollywood, replicating the interior of a New England college campus house, where the story unfolds. Production designer Richard Silver meticulously created a cramped and cluttered setting, highlighting the character's emotional states. The film's locations were primarily limited to the interiors of the house, with a few exterior shots. The logistical challenges of filming were mainly centered around capturing the intense emotional performances of the actors within the confined space of the set. To achieve this, the film's director, Mike Nichols, used long takes and minimal camera movements, allowing the actors to fully engage with their characters and the tension between them. An innovative technique employed during production was the use of a specially designed camera dolly, which could move smoothly along curb tracks. This allowed for unique camera angles and movements within the confined space of the set, contributing to the film's claustrophobic atmosphere. Despite the technical limitations of the time, the production team skillfully used these innovative techniques to bring Edward Albee's complex and intense play to life on the big screen. But the old man, her father, is over 200 years old. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? is a 1966 movie that has become a classic in the world of cinema. The film features a small cast of five actors, with Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor in the leading roles. The movie is lengthy, with a runtime of 131 minutes, and the majority of the screen time is taken up by Burton and Taylor's characters, Martha and George. The movie is set in a limited number of locations, making the success of the film heavily dependent on the actors' performances. Fortunately, Burton and Taylor deliver with a riveting and engaging portrayal of a couple locked in a bitter and constant battle. Despite the intense fighting, the movie never becomes dull or tedious. However, it is worth noting that the Broadway version of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was widely regarded as superior to the film adaptation. The original Martha, played by Uta Hagen, received glowing reviews and was widely considered to be one of the greatest performances in the history of theater. Unfortunately, the film failed to capture the same level of greatness, with Elizabeth Taylor's performance being criticized for its lack of fire and authenticity. Despite this, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf remains a must-see for anyone interested in classic cinema and outstanding acting. The film's intense and engaging portrayal of a troubled marriage is both captivating and thought-provoking, making it a true classic in the world of drama. In conclusion, while the Broadway version of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf may have been superior, the film adaptation is still a must-see for fans of classic cinema. The outstanding performances of Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, combined with the intense and engaging storyline, make this a true classic that is sure to endure for generations to come. Be still. Sorry, Mother. Can't you be still? Dominus for this. Not with George around. The 1966 movie Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf showcases a unique musical score and soundtrack which significantly contributes to the film's narrative and emotional tone. The music, composed by Alex North, is a blend of jazz and classical elements, reflecting the turbulent and complex relationships between the characters. North, an accomplished composer, skillfully used dissonance and tension in his compositions to mirror the emotional turmoil experienced by the characters. The score features a prominent piano, symbolizing the character of Martha, who is often seen playing it in the film. The use of jazz elements, such as improvisation, further emphasizes the chaotic and unpredictable nature of the storyline. The soundtrack also includes popular songs from the 1960s, which subtly comment on the film's themes of deception, illusion, and the breakdown of social norms. For instance, the song Little Girl Blue by Nina Simone played during the opening credits, sets the tone for the film's exploration of disillusionment and the loss of innocence. 
The musicians involved in the film score, including the pianist Dick Hazard, brought Norse compositions to life, creating a haunting and unforgettable soundtrack. The music's ability to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the film is a testament to North's compositional prowess and the musician's skillful execution. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf are integral to the film's overall impact, providing a captivating backdrop to the story's intricate and emotional narrative. The music, with its blend of jazz and classical elements, skillfully mirrors the characters' relationships and the film's themes, leaving a lasting impression on the viewer. You think you'd be happy here at New Carthage? Well, we hope... In 1969, Richard Burton purchased a remarkable diamond for his wife, Elizabeth Taylor, which became known as the Burton Cartier Diamond. The diamond had a fascinating history, starting as a 244-carat rough stone discovered at South Africa's premier mine in 1966. After being cut and polished by Harry Winston, the diamond was put up for auction, with Burton successfully acquiring it for approximately $6 million in 2005 dollars. Ten years later, Taylor auctioned off the diamond to fund a hospital in Botswana. During the filming of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? In 1966, Elizabeth Taylor gained weight for her role and deglamorized her appearance. However, she still preferred not to eat too much in the opening scene where she is seen eating a chicken leg. Elizabeth Taylor's episode of Biography in 1987 was the highest rated episode of the series on arts and entertainment, highlighting her enduring popularity. In the classic Here's Lucy episode Lucy meets the Burtons in 1970, Lucille Ball's character, Lucy Carter, gets the famous Burton Taylor diamond stuck on her finger with the actual ring used during filming. The episode was the highest rated episode of the very popular series. In summary, Richard Burton's purchase of the Burton Cartier diamond for Elizabeth Taylor, Taylor's dedication to her role in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and her appearance on Biography all demonstrate her enduring appeal and influence. Meanwhile, the use of the actual Burton Taylor diamond in the Here's Lucy episode showcases the diamond's cultural significance. My wife's in the can with a liquor bottle and she winks at me. One of the most iconic scenes in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is the heated argument between Martha and George in their kitchen. The director, Mike Nichols, used long takes to capture the intensity of the performances. The cinematography is intimate, with the camera close on the actors' faces, making the audience feel like they are eavesdropping on a private conversation. Elizabeth Taylor's performance in this scene is remarkable. She is able to convey Martha's anger, frustration, and vulnerability all at once. Taylor later said in an interview that this scene was the most challenging for her, as she had to dig deep emotionally to portray Martha's pain. Richard Burton's performance as George is equally impressive. He is able to match Taylor's intensity, and their verbal sparring is electrifying. Burton said in an interview that he and Taylor had a unique chemistry that allowed them to push each other to greater heights in their performances. The impact of this scene on the audience is profound. It is a raw and honest portrayal of a marriage in crisis, and it is impossible not to be affected by the emotions on display. The scene is a testament to the power of great acting, directing, and cinematography. Another iconic scene is the party game Get the Guests, where Martha and George invite a young couple, Nick and Honey, to their home and proceed to humiliate and manipulate them. This scene is a masterclass in tension building as the audience is left on edge wondering what Martha and George will do next. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy. The use of shadows and darkness adds to the sense of unease, and the camera angles create a feeling of claustrophobia. The performances are once again exceptional, with Taylor and Burton excelling in their roles as manipulative and cruel hosts. The impact of this scene on the audience is one of discomfort and unease. It is a brilliant exploration of power dynamics and the human desire to feel superior to others. The scene is a testament to the film's enduring legacy and its ability to resonate with audiences today. I actually fell for him. It. That. There. Elizabeth Taylor, known for her role in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, holds a unique place in animation history as one of the few actors to voice themselves and a fictional character in The Simpsons. In the film, she starred alongside Richard Burton, who had to decline a role in Under the Volcano due to scheduling conflicts with a theater production. 
Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Received four Academy Award nominations, including for Best Picture. Notably, it was the only black and white film nominated for Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography, and Best Costume Design that year. The film's technical achievements were widely recognized, making it a standout among the year's nominees. Okay. George has watery blue eyes. Kind of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, released in 1966, is a movie adaptation of Edward Albee's play. Its cultural and social impact stems from its groundbreaking depiction of marital discord, mature themes, and use of language. The film resonated with audiences due to its raw and unapologetic exploration of a troubled marriage, which was considered daring for its time. The movie influenced pop culture by challenging traditional norms and expectations around marriage and relationships. It pushed boundaries in terms of language and content, leading to the creation of the MPAA film rating system the film's impact can also be seen in the way it inspired future filmmakers and writers to tackle complex and mature themes in their work. In terms of social and cultural themes, the movie contributed to discussions around gender roles, power dynamics, and communication within relationships, yet highlighted the destructive consequences of deceit and the importance of honesty and openness in maintaining healthy relationships. The film also explored the idea of illusions and the role they play in shaping our perceptions of reality. Overall, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? left a lasting impact on the cultural and social landscape by challenging conventions and sparking important conversations around relationships and communication. A million. No kidding. Uh. Anyway, Blondie and his Frau out of the Plain States came. In the world of movies, there are often interesting behind-the-scenes stories that unfold. One such story revolves around the 1966 movie Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Here are some intriguing facts about this film. Firstly, it is worth noting that Elizabeth Taylor, a renowned actress, played a crucial role in the making of this movie. In 1964, she got Sharon Tate fired as an extra from the Sampaper. This decision was made because Taylor didn't want fans to compare their looks and youth. Another interesting fact is that Elizabeth Taylor was unable to attend the civil partnership ceremony of her friend Sir Elton John in England. The reason for her absence was her illness, which prevented her from being there in December 2005. Lastly, it's fascinating to learn that Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was the most expensive black and white movie ever made in the U.S. at the time. With a budget of $75 million, it broke records. The combined salaries and fees of the talented trio Dame Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and Edward Albee amounted to two three hundred fifty thousand. Taylor received one one million. Burton earned seven hundred fifty thousand, and Albee was paid five hundred thousand. These facts shed light on some intriguing aspects of the 1966 movie *Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf*, giving us a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes drama and the financial investment that went into creating this remarkable film. He loved the sun. And he was tan before and... Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, directed by Mike Nichols and released in 1966, received high critical acclaim and numerous award nominations. The film is based on Edward Albee's play, showcasing intense performances from its lead actors, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. The New York Times critic, Bosley Crowther, praised the movie, highlighting the extraordinary performances of Taylor and Burton. He also commended the director for his extraordinary visual imagination. This positive review from a prominent newspaper helped attract audiences to the film. The film was nominated for 13 Academy Awards, a record held until 1977. It won five Oscars, including Best Actress for Elizabeth Taylor, Best Supporting Actress for Sandy Dennis, and Best Director for Mike Nichols. These accolades recognize the exceptional talent and hard work of the cast and crew enhancing their reputations in the film industry. The movie's success at the Golden Globe Awards included wins for Best Motion Picture Drama, Best Actress Drama for Elizabeth Taylor, and Best Supporting Actress for Sandy Dennis. These awards further solidified the film's status as a critically acclaimed and popular success. The British Film Academy Awards also acknowledged the film with six nominations and two wins, including Best Foreign Actress for Elizabeth Taylor and Best Director for Mike Nichols the numerous awards and nominations for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf highlighted the movie's impact on audiences and critics alike. 
The accolades bestowed upon the film have lasting implications for those involved, as they serve as reminders of the film's enduring quality and the significant contributions made by its cast and crew. <laughs> yes, Martha, now that you've had the bad taste to bring the matter up in the first place, when is the... Elizabeth Taylor, a highly regarded actress, had a remarkably eventful personal life and career. One of her co-stars, Norma Heyman, was even the matron of honor at her wedding to Larry Fortinsky. Richard Burton, Taylor's co-star in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, had a longtime acting friend named Robert Hardy. During filming, Hardy observed the couple's notorious on-screen antagonisms evaporating off-screen as they interacted amicably with each other. Taylor's acting career began early, with a casting agent commenting on her old eyes when she was only 19. Despite this seemingly negative feedback, Taylor's career flourished, and she became a celebrated actress known for her powerful and emotive performances. Her old eyes, which had been criticized, ultimately became one of her most distinctive features and aided in her success as an actress. I've always done it. Like Big Ben, huh? Mm -hmm. Just watch it. Uh -huh. George makes everybody sick. Why? The filming of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf in 1966 was marked by intense dedication and tumultuous relationships, both on and off screen. Elizabeth Taylor, known for her fiery personality, was going through a difficult time in her personal life, which added to the volatility. She and co-star Richard Burton, who were married at the time, were often at odds during filming, their heated arguments sometimes continuing off screen. Mike Nichols, the director, was a newcomer to film direction, having previously only directed stage productions. His inexperience in film led to clashes with his cinematographer, Haskell Wexler, over the film's visual style. Wexler wanted to use a more naturalistic approach, while Nichols favored a theatrical style. This tension resulted in a unique blend of stage and film aesthetics. The film's intense dialogue and complex character relationships were challenging for the cast. Sandy Dennis, who played the role of Honey, was so nervous about her performance that she would often throw up before filming her scenes. Her anxiety, however, contributed to her character's nervous and high-strung demeanor. Despite the challenges, the film was a critical success and is now considered a classic of American cinema. The raw and intense performances, coupled with a unique blend of stage and film aesthetics, make Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf a compelling watch? The behind-the-scenes turmoil added an extra layer of authenticity to the film's exploration of marital strife and personal demons. Soon, everyone in the gin mill in the 1966 film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? The character Nick, played by George Siegel, is not referred to by name, similar to the play. Actress Sandy Dennis, who played Honey, suffered a miscarriage during filming, adding to the drama behind the scenes. Elizabeth Taylor, who played Martha, received the prestigious John F. Kennedy Center Honors in 22, recognizing her significant contributions to the arts. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, released in 1966, is a significant milestone in film history. The movie, directed by Mike Nichols, brought raw and intense drama to the screen, tackling complex themes like marriage, power, and illusion. The film's groundbreaking portrayal of adult relationships, coupled with exceptional performances from Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, set a new standard for acting and storytelling in Hollywood. The movie's impact on future filmmaking is undeniable. It demonstrated that mature, thought-provoking subjects could attract audiences and critical acclaim. This paved the way for more sophisticated and character-driven films, influencing directors like Sidney Lumet, Woody Allen, and Robert Altman. Moreover, the film's innovative use of long takes, unconventional camera angles, and editing techniques inspired many filmmakers to experiment with their visual storytelling. The raw and intimate atmosphere created by these techniques allowed the audience to fully engage with the characters and their emotional journeys. Subsequent works inspired by Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf include films like The Fight Club, Carnage, and A History of Violence, which all explore the darker aspects of human nature and relationships. The play on which the film is based has also been revived on stage, further solidifying its status as a classic of American theater and cinema. In summary, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf has left an indelible mark on film history, pushing the boundaries of what could be depicted on screen 
and inspiring future filmmakers to explore complex themes and emotions in their work. The match seemed practical too. For a while, Daddy really thought that George had... Have you seen the 1966 classic, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? This film, directed by Mike Nichols, left a lasting impact on cinema and its viewers. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this movie. Did it affect you personally? How did it influence your perspective on cinema? Share your thoughts with us. Let's engage in a meaningful conversation about this iconic film. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Your support helps us continue these discussions. Let's keep the conversation going.